Hi there. In this video we're going to talk about guacamole. And I don't mean the kind that you dip your chip into. We're talking about Apache guacamole and a great piece of software that allows you to control the desktops and servers within your own company through a single website or gateway. Uh, let me, you know, I've, I've dug into this. I've looked around at installing guacamole for off and on for the last year. And there's a lot of conflicting information. And I don't really feel like there is one very clear, detailed source. Uh, in the case, in my case, it's with Ubuntu 22.04, uh, but this may apply to other flavors of Linux as well. And I've documented the process, and it works. So what I'm going to do is run through the wiki and demonstrate uh, a line at a time what's happening. And I'm going to provide this documentation for you to download so you can repeat it on your end. You may want to create your own bash script. I'm personally using uh, Ansible and uh, to automate the process, and it's carrying out these steps one at a time. So no further ado, let's get you started. Okay, so on the screen behind me, you see it starts off with guacamole installation. This is from our own uh, uh, wiki, recorded knowledge. The variables that you'll want to set up in advance are as follows. I'm just going to run through this. You can replay this and stop where you want to and uh, make notations or download the document. Uh, dependencies that you're going to need to install. Free to free RDP to dev, RDP to da, uh, dash x11, and uh, open JDK 11 as of today. And uh, that's going to cover a lot of different um, versions of guacamole. It's the only JDK that's been out for quite a while now. Uh, Tomcat server has to be installed um, to serve your Java packages, and it's got to be installed first. You should add a dedicated user uh, to the Tomcat server install. That way you're not running it with a root, which is a bad idea from a security standpoint. You're going to make the required Tomcat directories. You're going to then download the Tomcat version. And yeah, I'm using variables throughout that are being pulled from the variables that you created earlier in this process. And that way they'll apply to whatever version you're using. You're going to need to create, oh, here we go. Here we, we uh, extract the uh, tar GZ file that we downloaded and send it to the Tomcat path, which in my case is, a, is opt slash uh, Tomcat and, uh, and then the version. This is the uh, required, this is a required file, the set environment sh file. Uh, Tomcat's going to look for it. It needs to be there, and you need to create it. So create the file and put these values inside of it. And you notice uh, you're going to use your Tomcat path and versions and things of that nature where they apply. You can use the versions that I've set at the top of this page. They certainly work as of right now in 2023. Uh, configurations. We need to make executable um, all files in the Tomcat path version bin folder recursively, recur whatever's in there. Uh, and then we need to change ownership to Tomcat of everything that's in there, including a most recent set environment file. We need to create a service file to start Tomcat. So go ahead and do that and paste the following in it. Scrolling down a little further, we're going to go ahead and start Tomcat and then move on to installing the guacamole server. So right now we shouldn't have any error messages. Tomcat should have started. You can do a uh, system CTL status Tomcat to verify that it is running. It has to be running before you can go any further. So make sure that's all worked out. Now we're going to download and install. First download the targz file, you filling in the variables where they apply the guacamole version, the guacamole version again here, and that'll pull it down, and then you're going to want to extract it um, to the guac path, which in my case is etc. slash guacamole. That'll be the norm. 
and uh, and then we're going to do a make install. So it doesn't have an apt get install package for Guacamole at this time. Um, this is the way it gets done. So you go to the configure directory, and then you run Mike, and then after that gets done, you run make install, and then after that gets done, you run LD config. You've got to create two directories. They're not created automatically, and if they're not there, it will fail to start, and you won't know why. So create those directories. You've got to create a guacamole properties file, and this is these are some of the reasons why this fails. We've had to create on our own uh, Tomcat file set environment, um, a couple of guacamole directories, a guacamole properties files. Um, these files that don't come with these packages and cause failure. Um, and I've been through them, and I know the failure. I've, I've experienced the failure, and uh, and that's why I've decided to create this video because it's such a great program. I want as many people uh, to install it as possible and not get sidelined because of the brain damage factor that I've been through. Okay, so in the Guacamole properties files, you can copy and paste this. Now, let me point out um, the default use case for installing Guacamole is using a user mapping file. It's a user mapping.xml, and in that file is going to be the administrative user and the administrative password. Um, and that's it, you know, and, if you, if, and the other things that you, uh, that, that we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, there are some use cases, which including mine, where I wanted to use LDAP. That's going to be the exception. Um, not everybody needs LDAP. Uh, there are those that are going to want to use MySQL without LDAP uh, as a way of um, maintaining credentials and users and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this video doesn't touch on the installation of either of those two, but I will tell you that if you do want to use LDAP, it is required that you also install MySQL. It is dependent upon. Uh, that's, you can install MySQL by itself, but if you want LDAP, you need them both. And then we're going to create the user mapping XML file, which again would not exist otherwise. And within it, um, it's, it's going to look like this. Okay, that's what goes inside. But before you can put the, uh, the username and password uh, are both MD5 encrypted. Actually, I think I've made a mistake here, and you want to correct for it. I don't think that the username needs to be encrypted. I think it's just the password that needs to be encrypted. So to create an MD5 version of your password, um, you would just do something like this. Create a new variable name, equal, uh, and then you echo your existing real password, which is also a variable, and uh, if you would like it to be, and then the MD5 sum and the awk file, and then you'll have a new variable right here that'll, that'll contain the encrypted string, which is your password. And then you'll plug that in here, username and password. Again, username, I do believe, is just your regular username, and the password will be the encrypted, the MD5 version of your password. In fact, it highlights that right here. Password is, so it, this is this actually came with the default example user mapping file, so I'm going to assume that we only need the password. All right, I've modified this document. I've, I've verified that that's all it needs, so when you download it, it'll have the right stuff. We, we just need the regular username and the web admin uh, MD5 version of the password. Okay, moving on, we've got to touch or create the etc. guacamole guaccd.conf file. Must be there. Not using it right now, but it must be there. And then that's the end of installing uh, guacamole. Let's go ahead and start the service right here. Now we've got a few other things to clean up. And again, you should have no errors. Guacamole should be running. And uh, with those two running, we've got past the uh, lion's share of what needs to be done. Here we're going to create a symlink um, that uh, the symlink is here and it points to here. And that's how that gets created. We're going to um, create, a we're going to assign ownership of Tomcat to the Tomcat path recursively. I know we've done that before, but we've made some changes now. We just want to make sure it's got it covered. Uh, and we're going to restart both the Tomcat and Guacamole service. Now we're going to install the Guacamole client. There's not much to it, a single file. 
but it's got to be done. So we're going to get, um, and we're going to put this file in the set for guacamole directory, and that's what that P flag is for, and we're going to download it from here, this war file. And you see the version of guacamole is inserted there as a variable. That will download it and put it there. So you don't need to do anything else beyond that. Then we're going to create a symlink um, that points to the file that you just downloaded in the Tomcat path in the web apps directory. And that, that command looks like this. And that will put that symlink in place. Now here's something that you'll run into even with a perfect installation, as I have. Uh, I couldn't get remote desktop working with Windows. It worked fine with Apple right out of the box. Probably would have worked fine with Linux. Total fail in Windows. Brand new, unwrapped, perfect install, all services running, rejected every time. Um, digging into it, the specific in my log files, I was seeing warning free RDP initialization may fail. User SBIN is not writable. Well, this has something to do with running as a daemon instead of a user, uh, and this is what cured it. We installed it, and this, this is documented online. I didn't make this up. I researched it. I found that a lot of other people that have run into it, and this is the solve. Created this user, create a home directory for the user, give ownership to that directory for Guaxi, come down here, and then edit. You modify the existing Guac. C D service, block D service, and it's set for system D system. You'll find that file, and we change user daemon to user guac D. And I think the rest of it is identical to what it was. Restart, and you're done. At this point, you'll be able to log into Windows, no problem. The the errors that you saw that I saw in the log file completely went away. Now to reach Guacamole, you would use the 127. That, let's say you were logged in from the server that you installed it on and you had a GUI to use. This address would get you there. 8080 is the port it uses by default. Uh, you could also log in from another machine as long as it's on the very same network um, and point to the IP address of the machine you installed it upon. So do an IP add, get your IP address, Go to some other computer on the network, you'll be able to pull it up, for instance, like this. Okay, and don't forget the guacamole directory at the end. That's a necessary part of the equation. You'll be greeted by something like this. Now, let's say you want to make it available uh, from a website where you type in mydesktopcomputers.com and it goes to your server. Uh, that's all possible. You can, um, we're using Nginx. The, the procedure is somewhat similar for uh, Apache. You'll have to pull out what applies to you, um, but we'll create a insights available by our domain name using the variable that we supplied at the top of this tutorial. And this is our vhost file, pretty typical of an Nginx uh, reverse proxy. And uh, you'll see we use 8080 here. So that's where we're going to want to go to when somebody types in that domain name. Restart Nginx and Bob's your uncle. Um, guacamole will be up and running. And that's it in a nutshell. Um, I'll give you uh, some directory examples. If we look at a, guacam a guacamole directory in the etc. guacamole, you see it has an extensions directory, a live extension. Uh, there's the guac CD file that we created, the guacamole properties file that we created the client war file that we downloaded. Um, these other extensions are specific to my use case because I used MySQL, LDAP, and TOTP, which is a, it's the dual two-factor authentication that uses your local auth app to ensure you are you. These are all extras not included in this video. And, uh, and of course, um, an added MySQL connector uh, jar here, but your, those don't need to be there for you. And then we'll go also take a look at the Tomcat directory. And that's where the bulk of the stuff is, as you can see. The Tomcat server serves it all up. 
and that's quite extensive and any of the files that we won't get into detail but any of the files that we would have created and put there will show up in that environment as well and that's it in a nutshell um, in a different video <coughs> I talk about how to theme Apache guacamole so if you don't want that stark white uh, load and you want to trick things out a little bit you can have <coughs> have it look a little bit more like this um, this here is uh, my example and uh, in fact I use two-factor authentication so even once you get there you've got to enter your code and we're in and then you can see the the look and feel is, is quite a bit different in here than what comes with the default installation a lot, a lot easier on the eyes a lot more professional anyway that is it thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoy the video and uh, please like or subscribe if you are so inclined. Bye-bye.